What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Marvel Disney has been in disarray for quite some time, Brian. And it's crazy, Brian, how if only a few years ago you would be listening to our uh, shows, you would hear angels singing and you know what I'm saying celebrations and stuff because that's all you were getting is just just amazing stuff some th- some stuff not so great but we saw possibilities and they and you saw the result just go back to the, the those little clips of people just screaming in theaters watching all these things happen in front of their very eyes now we're at the end of the movie we're looking at each other like what the hell is this what what happened we're still yet to see what james gunn and those guys got going on over there but we still we're very much hopeful for what they have going on but marvel it's it's just a sad situation and it has gotten even sadder brian The announcement that this dude is in the DC, is in is in Marvel, Brian, and that the possibility of him being Apocalypse, Brian, Brian, I am so out, Brian, all of it, because this just shows the desperation, yo. That's the word. So what Pablo is referring to is um, Dwayne Johnson and his seven bucks. Uh, <sighs> production company have signed a first look deal with the Walt Disney Company. It's a multi-year agreement that will see him and Danny Garcia developing films for theatrical and streaming platforms. I thought that was interesting. Films. They didn't say TV shows. They said films. Johnson will potentially star in the projects um, and the deal allows Seven Bucks to collaborate across multiple Disney divisions. It does not say Marvel, does not say Star Wars, but multiple divisions would certainly put that in play. Um, but look, uh, the rock obviously has worked with Disney quite a bit. So this is not out of left field, right? You know, jungle cruise was a massive failure. Um, but Moana, uh, animated was a massive success and they're bringing a sequel and a live action remake of that, uh, way back when he had a, he had a Disney contract when he wasn't the megastar where he made like race to which mountain and kind of like some of the stuff built on rides, like family, family friendly type stuff that he made like a long 15 years ago. But in some ways, I think desperation is the right word because right about now, there is a real parallel to me between the state of Dwayne Johnson and the state of Disney, right? These are two enterprises that a few years ago, you would have said were, if not on top, in many ways were the model, right? There were a couple of years there where I believe Dwayne Johnson was listed as like making the most money of anyone in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And his star power got to the point where people legitimately asked the question, should he run for president? That was not a joke discussion that was had. Disney, you just head on it. You know, 2019, you're, you're, you're you know, 20, kind of 2017 to 2019 where like the MCU is ramping toward Endgame and, you know, Force Awakens has come out for Star Wars and been the highest grossing movie in the history of domestic box office and, you know, Pixar and animated divisions. And you had the, you had the remake of um, like Lion King, which was like 1.6 billion. They were just putting billion dollar movies out like it was a bodily function. And now they're both on the decline and they're turning to each other as collaborators as a way to allay this fall and the the apocalypse thing is a rumor right like we don't know if he (laughs) is going to be that or not Mm -hmm. but now he's in the building contracting it's not the only place he can work but first look means like yeah he's going to do a lot with under the disney label i can tell you what's going to happen go for it He's going to pull his rock moves on Kevin, and Kevin is not going to be able to resist. He loves stars. Kevin loves stars. Like, look, at, look, at, look at what's infiltrated the MCU projects. A lot of stars. Not a lot of production. 
But it's going to be a very uncomfortable relationship because The Rock is going to impose his will on the decision makings there. As this was happening, something else was happening that I thought really accurately sum summarized the state of the world in Disney IP and Marvel IP, which was the promotion for Despicable Me 4. And I sent this to you. Steve Carell, who voices Gru, was out there promoting Despicable Me 4. And do you know how he did it? He put up a poster with the same font and logos and designs of the MCU oh. announcement list that Kevin <laughs> used to do at D23 or yeah. at Comic-Con. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Steve Carell is joking about the interconnectedness of the Minions Despicable Me universe. Mm -hmm. And he closes by saying, the hierarchy of power is about to change. <laughs> he got both of them. Shots yeah. fired. He made, they are the butt of the joke. That's the yeah. point. For a movie that's going to put up massive numbers, they are the butt of the joke for their promotion. That's where we're at with Disney and Dwayne Johnson. I would have wanted the, Dwayne The Rock Johnson to play Gladiator because... Here's a here's a character, Brian, in Gladiator that his power is directly attached to his confidence, Brian. The more confident he is, the stronger he is. The less confident he is, the le the weaker he is. And he's pretty much unstoppable. He would have been perfect for that, but uh, if Apocalypse is the one, is the thing that they, they choose to do, and it's the rock, and it's just, I, I, whatever. You get your Mayor Humdinger. You get your, yes. mayor, you get your mayor Humdinger as the rock. Oh, my God. <laughs> the rock, to me, is whatever. Nothing's going to change. He's going to do what he wants to do, and he's going to perhaps even further derail Marvel's uh, plans to, to, to get to where they used to be. That's the problem, right? There's nothing There's nothing in the Dwayne Johnson resume as movie star to suggest he's an actual collaborator, right? The, the choice of collaboration in that press release is the most misleading word there. <laughs> it's, it's his show. Yeah. It, it always is. And, then, you know, and I, I've kind of said, like, with his star power fading, that his days of really being able to do that are numbered. But maybe Disney's going to give him that one last contract, right? How many times do we see that in sports, right? The, the, the one last deal, right? They're trying to squeeze that that last juice, yeah. star year out of him, right? And so that's what gives me concern is that his views of what an audience wants to see when, you know, on a very wide scale have been limited. You know, the yeah. movies he's had that have been successful are pretty forgettable. Like he was bankable, but like he wasn't putting out billion dollar classics. He's making you money, nope. right? Like, you know, like we, we goof on like a rampage and, and, of San yeah. Andreas. We made money. But like he really hasn't had like his like other than like only established right. fair is where he's made money right like Moana Jumanji let's right these not things simple, he created let's, let, but let's keep it real simple he ain't no Arnold Schwarzenegger no he ain't no Sylvester Stallone no no he ain't no John Claude Van Damme you know? Was there was there another piece of news that we wanted to go over? Yeah, so what I kind of wanted to focus on was we, we've gotten some early tracking on Deadpool and Wolverine, and the numbers are huge for a opening weekend. This is and this is something we talked about. I, I've said from yeah. the very beginning the opening weekend was the biggest going to be huge for this move, and I've I've even low. I I thought it would be at least one fifty in the U.S. The early tracking is it's over two hundred. So that you're talking about a top five, it's top six opening weekend of all time. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do think it's going to be very front end loaded. I, I actually am not still not convinced that like just because they do that, they're going to do like one, two, one, three, like automatically. Like I, mm -hmm. I can see like everyone shows up and then doesn't show up again. And the movie mm -hmm. kind of like has a really steep decline, but it's going to matter for that weekend. And you're going to have a lot of people saying Marvel is back. And like this is the movie that fixed and i'm here to tell you that's a false dawn yeah, it's a false yeah. dawn like guardians 3 was a false dawn on just on a grander scale with bigger stars this yeah. is its own thing this is like ryan reynolds and hugh and they got their thing with this established characters and established franchise and like yes it is a big deal and the box office is hurting this summer 
And what you're seeing is people are really conserving their dollars, right? Inside Out 2 is going to do an enormous opening weekend. So there's a Disney property where people feel like they're saying, I don't see the issues that have permeated other Disney properties. I'm going to put my dollars into that and I'm going to go see it. So that one's looking at like $150, $160 million opening weekend now in the U.S., which would be one of Pixar's biggest of all time. Mm -hmm. You know, Despicable Me 4, another animated movie, is going to be a massive hit. Um, Mm -hmm. And Deadpool Wolverine is going to be a massive hit. But I don't think it changes anything. About certainly the trajectory not. It, 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 certainly the pro- it, it definitely not. It just provides a little bit of a. It stalls the inevitable, Brian. Yes. Yes. Because I don't see anything in Brave New World, in Thunderbolts. And this is what I mean by Mouse Aganda. Because <laughs> I'm telling, I'm going to keep hammering this team. Because what is Marvel getting criticized for? Yo, right? you got a trademark, it, man. Masaganda, you got. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna. Say, like, I don't want nobody to take it, you know. <laughs> because this is like we just talked about in the Star Wars universe. Marvel gets gets roasted, skewered for bad CGI for the last couple of years on everything they've touched, and Julia Louis Dreyfus. Credible voice, big time actress, wraps her filming on Thunderbolts, and what does she say? Oh, they're relying on practical effects. They're doing as little CGI as possible. Like, man, it ain't no coincidence. Like, don't buy that crap. Like, that is studio speak aimed at the criticism of what they're doing. What do you hear Anthony Mackie talking about with regard to Brave New World, which we know is a mess? We know has been a gigantic mess. What movie does he keep referencing? Winter Soldier. Why do you think he's talking about Winter Soldier 10 years after the fact? Mm. What is the, it's not that it is Winter Soldier or that it's going to be as good as Winter Soldier. They just want you thinking about when they were good at this. <laughs> so they you want to actually to look just, at what they're they, doing. <laughs> they want you to be like, is this going to be like Winter Soldier? <laughs> oh, let me I'll go check. Give you my money. <laughs> And like, you know, someone commented on it and it's, it's in our one of our videos and like shout out to them because it's so true. It's like at the end of the day, you're talking about superheroes with powers and magic. You know, like you can't do all that practically. Like, sorry, like, you have to have CGI. And by the way, there's plenty of really good CGI around. Yes. Like, let's not even mention them. Right. It's <laughs> <Why? laughs> If you're into this business, and yeah, if you're into this business, you're reading the news. You know that there have been there have been little resources used to make spectacular things. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave with a box of scraps. Yeah, one of them just hit Netflix finally this weekend. If you haven't seen Godzilla minus one, pull it up. Even the dubbing is dope. Actually, you're right. I, I did watch it a little bit dubbed, and I was impressed. Yeah, I was like, wow, wow this is this is good. <laughs> this isn't yeah. crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. Uh, what else, Brian? So I guess what I wanted to ask you, and I, I think, I don't know, we haven't done this show in a while, but maybe we should start firing up the engine, which is the, you know, we oh, know snap. Captain Kennedy needs to go, but like... How much closer are we getting to the conversation around whether Kevin Feige should still run this shit? If Blade falls apart, as it looks like it has, and he gets the temporary respite from a big Deadpool and Wolverine, which I ultimately think Ryan Reynolds will get the credit for. I actually don't think Kevin and company will get the credit for that. I think Reynolds is going to win. Hell and, yeah. and Hugh Jackman is going to win. They're, they're the two who are going to get that. Those flowers. And we roll into Brave New World. And Kevin Nunn just a, happens to be on it. Right. And so if Brave New World is a train wreck, and if Thunderbolts is, you know, not great, as I've oh, we've kind of expected it to be, like, and, you know. And the backlash that Blade is going to get. Let's just right. put it out there. So if all of that is where we're at a year from now, like, when are we having the conversation that new leadership is required? <laughs> 
Ryan, I've been talking about this for this possibility for a minute already. Because it doesn't seem to have gotten better. Even though you would have thought because Iger coming back, you would have been like, okay, things are going to go back to sort of how they used to be. But no, we continue to get awfulness and only goodness off of the efforts of others, not necessarily Kevin. Kevin is saying yes, but I don't think he's part of the machine that was Marvel as it is now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what purpose is he serving other than the name and the disaster that comes along with it right now, Brian? Because... There's no, there's no reason to, you know, I, like you said, Kathleen Kennedy and now Kevin Feige need to be really have a good chat with, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And be like, yo. That's what I'm saying. Like Disney has made its money back many times over on the Star Wars investment and the Marvel investment, but they need those investments to keep paying off. They can't have that return start to diminish over a multi-year period because everything is linked. The amusement parks, the merchandise, like it has to keep refreshing. And so like if you have Star Wars and Marvel both in the tank from an IP perspective and we know that they have problems on the animated side as well, it's not great and at some point like there's accountability and it's not going to be Iger. So you're like, okay, we just went through Marvel's TV situation. We're like, okay, maybe Brad Windebaum gets let go, like maybe I, before Feige, okay, but at the end of the day, it's the head of the snake, man. Like, I, I don't know where else it, the buck ultimately stops with him. That's the way they've structured that organization. Yeah. So at some point, you have to look at what he's green lighting. It doesn't matter how close he is, right? We, we, we've given him a lot of passes for being like, oh, it got too big. It got too expansive. He's not as close to the project as it used to be. Okay. But at some point, if you're the one signing all the checks and putting your name on all the projects, like, you know, and even if you're a Hall of Famer, which Kevin Feige is a first ballot Hall of Fame producer for all time, no matter what else happens. Certainly. That doesn't mean necessarily you're the right guy for the job at that moment. Absolutely and not. Are we there yet? I don't know, but I'm just saying we I did a show about this. We, we did a show about this like a year ago. We got to go. That's what I'm saying. We did a show about this a year ago, and it's like a year later. You're still in the same boat, and it's got worse. The, bo- the boat has more holes in it. There's more water and in the boat. Not, and it's and it's not even because of the movies now, Brian. It's because of the non-movies. Blade, this whole Blade situation has nothing to do really too much with. It's behind the scenes stuff, Brian. Yeah, look at Spider-Man 4. Like, they can't get anyone. Yeah. They Captain can't get anyone to direct the movie. Like, the, the latest I heard was they were going to get, um, um, was it? Bilal and Fala, the bad boys guys, were going to direct Spider Man 4? Are you serious? <laughs> like, that's where, we're, no offense, like, those guys did some entertaining stuff, but, like, you're coming off a movie that made $2 billion, and you and can't they the do the best unwatchable you can do, Batgirl? Uh, yes, they were involved. They were the directors of Batgirl, yeah. And it was unwatchable, supposedly. So, the best you can do is. They're the only ones who will take the call. Nobody wants to do this. No one wants to put their career on the line here, Brian, because that's what it is. Certainly you'll get money, but if it, listen, this is the difference. Certainly you're getting a bag, but how much of that bag will sustain you to do the thing that you love to do, quote unquote, yep. right? Yep. If movie, if move, if movies is what you, no, I, I, M. Night Shyamala is in the business because he does interesting things, Brian, that nobody's thinking about. So you it's can't say no good, to the right? He, he missed. It's not always lot. good. Yeah, but, but he swings. You, you take a chance. He swings because it could be because it's cheap to make, and it could be crazy. Yep. Same thing with Jordan Peele, who took a meeting with Marvel about directing the X Men movie, and apparently passed. Because Jordan that would have Peele, been, by the way, that would have been interesting. That would have been interesting if it, it would have been let if, into his hands, and and he left. He, and I'm pretty sure he didn't want to do uh, do the movie because that wasn't the case. He was just I a agree. hired gun, and Jordan Peele's the dude that does his and, vision. And, and. Yep. So what's you know what I'm saying? He probably went to go see. Oh snap, X Men! Let me see what this is about. Right? He's not going to just say no. 
He's going to see what this is about, and uh, they're not going to let me, you know what I'm saying? I have my own ideas. Forget it. I bet it. you he's an X-Men fan, and I bet you he has a take already. And I bet, oh, yeah. you you're, I bet you you're right that the deal breaker is he couldn't get the degree control. of control that he wanted and needed. Anything else, Brian, before we wrap this one up? No, just like I said, those are the those are the key points. But I, I just we talked about Star Wars, we talked about Marvel, you know, and it's weird. Like I said, you're getting Bob Iger's thing about sequels is paying off because Inside Out Two looks like a huge hit. Deadpool and Wolverine's a sequel that looks like a huge hit. So like you still have these and Guardians Three last year, you still have these holdovers, right? These holdover IP where people are comfortable with it, they are comfortable, they know what they're going to get entertainment wise, and they show that they're perfectly willing to plunk down their hard earned dollars in a tough inflation environment to go see those. But outside of that, the bar has been raised and. There's just not a lot getting there on either the TV or the film side for Marvel and Star Wars. And that has to be a concern. That cannot go on forever for Disney. Yeah. Oh, man. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Marvel situation, man, because it's not good. It is not good. And I, nobody's willing to sort of now, Brian, waste their time. With watching anything Marvel for what? Maybe unless it's animated, right? That's the only thing right now we've got. We got some. Unless we got, it's we got animated, I guess. Right? Over it's crazy but. how things change, right? Because Marvel animation was whack before. They had a few <laughs> sprinkles of good stuff. I have Avengers, Ultimate Avengers, yeah. uh, even. The, the 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 dreaded young Avengers man was was okay. <laughs> I like the storyline, but what Kevin is trying to do here is just like, come on, Kevin, let it go, man. This is just not for you right now, not for any of us. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this, man. And uh, it is uh, it is just wow. I gotta if I had if I had the time, Brian, I would go back to our older episodes and just see the comparisons how time has changed i think it will be an interesting video but let us know in the conversation below what you guys think and we'll see you next time on the nerd report the show goes on